Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. I think I overdid it today. We've got three Grandmaster decks, one Hella deck, tips from two of the people who created the decks, and we've got your questions, and we've got a tier list for Series 4 and Series 5. So we've got a ridiculously big video. Before we get started, please hit that sub button. Please hit that like. Please hit that comment. We give you more great Marvel Snap content than everyone. There's a video at this point every day of the week. Three new decks every single weekday. Bundle guides, everything you need. Helping us is free by hitting that sub button. Hopefully you're willing to do so. We also have this giveaway sheet. It's in the description to the video. It's every active giveaway in Marvel Snap. Free stuff, great content. Check it out. Next up, we have our deck credits and outline. We begin with our credits of the day, or sorry, questions of the day. Then we're going to look at Husky Puppies deck. Husky Puppies 35 on Twitch t uh, TV. Rob Rivern helped us with the tips, but Husky Puppies, like, talked Rob through the deck. So please, 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 if you are willing, check out Husky Puppies on Twitch. Super cool person, super helpful. Hella expert. Which is wild, because Hella and Jory doesn't play Hella, but Husky Puppies, that's where you go. Then we've got the quick Series 4 target list. I didn't want to call it a tier list. It's sort of a tier list, but like it's here's how I would target the cards. Then we've got a deck from Tucker, the homie, the Pirate King. Check out Tucker at twitch.tv slash Tucker or YouTube at Tucker. T-U-C-C-R-R. Tucker is the man. One of my favorite people in Marvel Snap. Has an awesome 60% win rate in like a reasonable sample. A 60% win rate... Um, why I wanted to say hello now. Grandmaster deck, it's exciting. Then we've got the Quick Series 5 target list. Then we've got a deck from KM Worst. Yes, that is the real name. It is twitter.com slash KM Worst. It's a member of the KMS community. KM also, uh, I'm going to call him Worst, so I'm not confused. Cool. So Worst also, um, the deck was already featured on KM's channel, and Worst was going to do, I believe, one of those interviewee things with KM that he does with creators of decks. But um, it fell through for whatever reason. I don't know why I honestly didn't ask. And instead, we're going to get those tips here on this video. Um, we're going to talk about the Patreon quickly. We have one. You know, try and sell you on it for two minutes. Then we're going to look at a bonus deck from the Counter Guy, which is our last Grandmaster deck of the day. Then we'll do shop and shoutouts and call it an evening. Morning for you guys, I guess, right? Most of you watch this in the morning. All right, so this is a daily snap show. We got three decks a day and have numerous recurring segments, which means, hey, buckle in. I think you'll like it, but this is going to be a full show. Sunday, we covered um, series four or five card acquisition with all the math from Lauren Whatevs. So if you are trying to figure out how to best acquire cards, best use your spotlight caches, please check that video out. I think you'll enjoy it. Next Wednesday, we're kicking off our season pass giveaway. Uh, two days ago, not yesterday at this point, with so many Grandmaster decks. Tomorrow, we'll have our weekend mission decks. If you're interested in the Patreon, patreon.com slash snapjudgments. And if you need personal help or you'd like to chat, hop on the Marvel Snap Zone Discord and shoot me a message. You can DM me. You can post in public. I reply as best I can to everyone. I'm willing to help you build decks. I promise it might take me a couple of days. I'm a busy human being. But hey, I will make time if you're interested. Questions of the day. Joseph New, York, uh, Joseph New York wants to know what the Cosmo emote represents. The argument is that the Ms. Marvel represents FU. What the Cosmo emote represents is, for me, literally, I go, oh my god, oh my god, look, I got all the hips. That's all it means to me. It doesn't mean anything, but, like, it's so cool. Look, I've got this cool new emote. Because it's so rare at this point that, like, it's just kind of an excited, look, look, I have this thing even when you do it at the end of games um it's like i think it's meant to be sort of as marvely but it doesn't feel that way because there's like so much excitement to it and cosmo's a good dog joe pro asks what keyword mechanic i'd like to see added and uh, will we get category level buffs so um i'd like to see more stuff like it's the reason i'm doing this as the custom card challenge for this week if you like custom cards check yesterday's vid but um the reason we're doing a custom card challenge of adding things to the deck is I really think that's an interesting interesting mechanic for Snap because of how um because of how few cards are there are in the deck you're likely to see things you add to the deck especially if you have like two copies and I think cards like Rock Slide um and or like cards that add specific powerful things to it, like great stats but add a specifically powerful card to the opponent's deck are really really cool like imagine a Sentry right that um put a negative 10 
a, a zero ten goblin into your opponent's deck or something like that. Like and stuff like that would be really cool. I'd like to see it. Um, Joe also wants to know if we're going to get category level buffs. So that would be like all Avengers get a buff, all X Men get a buff. So the game I came from, the um, Game of Thrones card game, had these things called agendas, and you played an agenda, and then all the cards that fit whatever criteria got a buff. Or, like, you changed your win condition, or you drew extra cards, or drew fewer cards at, at the expense of whatever. I think it's a matter of time before Snap explores that space. In fact, I think it already has, and his name is High Evolutionary. Um, if they're unwilling to do category level buffs, they release a card that basically says um, the following cards get X, right? Just like High Evolutionary, it'll be like all of your Avengers get blah. And then, like, there'll be a specific list of Avengers. I think they'll have to add, like, keyword tags to the game to make that work, but I fully expect it to happen. Like, all of your Avengers get plus uh, one if Captain America's in play instead of just the ones in his lane, something like that. Um, Praetorian asks if Second Dinner introduces factions and only certain cards can be used with certain decks. What happens? Excuse me, sorry about that. If SD introduces factions, only certain cards can be used with certain decks, the game will die. It will be absolutely brutal. Uh... I don't expect that to happen. I don't think like when you play Avengers, only Avengers will be able to play. Be played in the deck. I think it would be more like High Evolutionary, where like you can run these cards and these cards get the bonus. Um, some will probably introduce deck restrictions, like you can't run cards that cost more than four or whatever. But I don't expect it to be absolutely brutal or anything like that. If you'd like your question read out in tomorrow's video, leave one in the comments. Priority answers as always for Patreons. All right, our first deck is the Hellalocter with Blob. This is Husky Puppies January deck. This deck is really, really good. Uh, we featured a version of this from JD McDonaldino right after, uh, right after the update to Blob, because JD was like, "Oh my God, if I go Salvage Samurai Blob in a Hella deck, that's wildly good, right? I should be able to just have an extra humongous thing to bring back." So. I built it, we tested a little bit, it was good, but it wasn't perfect, so I was like, hey, um, Robert Rivard is a member of our Discord and Patreon, and I was like, hey, Rob, you are a massive Hella player, can you test this out? And he did, and then he ended up finding Husky Puppies, who is uh, the top-ranked Hella player in the world, as far as I know right now, and so we ended up at this list. Let's talk some more about it. All right, um, let's do some card replacements. You can try Gambit or Moon Knight for Silver Samurai, the deck gets worse. Right. If you if you don't have Samurai, it's not totally worth running Blob. Um, if you have Samurai but not Blob, you can just add Iron Man. It's totally fine. If you have no Blob or Samurai, keep uh, Gambit or Moon Knight, but add Scar or She-Hulk. Let's keep going. So this is top 40. I believe it is ranked either 40 or 41 right now. I was dancing a little bit as I checked. Uh, turn 1, Blade, would it make sense? Turn 2, same. Turn 3, Lockjaw um, and Snap. If not, Lady Sif is fine. And we'll talk more about Lady Sif on the next slide. Then we've got Jubilee is generally better than Samurai, pending your hand. Samurai, if you're going to hit... Um... So Jubilee is relatively safe if you've got, like, Death in hand, right? And you can... Um, and you've already got Hella. Samurai is safer if you've got just Blob in hand. And Sif is if you have Death or just any bigs and not Hella, right? Turn 5 is the same thing as 3 and 4. And then turn six is Hella, and if you don't have Hella, please drop Jubilee, ideally into Lockjaw, so that you can get Hella. All right, so Blob can eat Hella, which is a fail case for the deck. Most often, though, it eats you closer to Hella. It stopping at 15 is really awesome for this deck in particular. You don't want it to eat the whole deck. You want it to stop itself and leave you Hella. If it eats Hella and you lose the game because of that, okay. But you also now have this giant Blob that can still win you the game. Uh, Blade is try not to hit Blob or Death, or Hella, obviously, is the idea of Blade. It's fine any time from turn 1 to turn 5, but it's best into Lockjaw. If you can hit a big card that's not Blob or Death, you've just got, you've gotten ahead, right? Because Blob and Death can be target discarded. And again, Blade is fine basically any time you can fit it on Curve that it has the right thing. Sif is fine for Magneto Giganta and Infinite if you don't have it for Death. Sif is great. Obviously, um, once in a while, you're going to have to sift with Hell in hand and take the, like, 1 and 3 or 1 and 4. I would never, if I could avoid it, do that for a 1 and 2. I would play nothing over doing that for a 
But other than that, hey, it's fine. And sometimes it's going to pop out a locked on you just retreat. Um, even if you snapped, you just retreat. Lockjaw, don't mindlessly throw into him. The way Robert phrased this is, we are not Thanos. We can't just throw everything into Lockjaw without paying attention. If you don't have Hella by turn six, throw Jubilee into him, and now you have um, two chances at it at the end of the game. Unclog your hand by tossing a target at discard into him. Um, I.e., you just, like, you can throw that Lady Sif or that Blade into him and discard a card, even if it's not the like, most ideal card, and whatever pops out is fairly likely to be another discard card, and then suddenly you have a free hand. Um, he's dangerous because of Shang-Chi, if big cards come out early, but he but he is great Alive bait late. If you think your opponent has a Lyth, please do yourself a favor and Hela in another lane. Um, you can Hela into him if you're sure Alive isn't there, and you need power, or if you just have priority. Ooh. Sometimes you want to Hela into him because like a couple big cards are still in the deck, and Hell is only a six, but hey, turning that into a, um, what's his name? Giganto is pretty damn good. All right. Um, some more. Silver Samurai is hit Blob. You only really hit Jubilee if you already have Hella. If you have Hella, Jubilee's utility goes way down, and you're fine hitting Jubilee with um, your Silver Samurai, because then when you play Hella, it'll bring back Jubilee and get you something else. Hopefully, you can run out of deck space. Jubilee being the last card summoned back in the lane is amazingly frustrating. I lost a game with that the other day. Uh, Black Cat, please do not cut Black Cat. Black Cat makes bad hands work by discarding herself. She keeps you having hand space. She makes sure that you have a discard whenever she's drawn, basically. She's amazing in this deck. Magneto is big, but his ability is also great. Um, especially try and discard him. Not that you can always control that, but you can win games... Um, with just Magneto and Black Cat against like Ms. Marvel, Gladiator, Dark uh Darkhawk decks that don't see the nut by just being like, awesome, thank you. Magneto just pulled all that into this lane when it popped up. Giganto's key is that he's 14, which means he stops Blob, even with the other cheapest card in the deck, Jubilee, which is extra awesome. And then for Blob, you can just check what he drew. It's perfect for Samurai um to hold Jubilee, right? So like um he lets you save your Jubilee to late, and he's like the perfect discard for Samurai. Remember that to click on Blob and see what he tried to eat or what he ate, because it's going to let you inform the rest of your game plan. No, let you know if you have to run, your opponent should do the same. And his deck thinning is often just great for you. He makes it so that you see your stuff. Blob is really good in this deck. All right, quick look at this. This is not my variants. This is the variants that Rivern sent me. So we'll do a quick look. Uh, this is a reasonably cool blade. It's a very vampire hunter blade. We've got a Lockjaw who seems to be in mid-teleport. Lady Sif. Um, this Jubilee is from, I don't know, some festival that they gave her to us for. Still the best Silver Samurai in the game. I know the round one is nice, but eh. Uh, we've got a Black Cat that looks like Art Germ. I don't know if it is, but it looks like it. I run the Noir. Hit Blob. Couldn't, run, couldn't show this off without hips. And Hip Infinite, the death from that big old bundle, looks like a summer vacation giganto, which is adorable. Jim Lee for Magneto, and recent Hella bundle, which is the best Hella. So happy I bought it. Oh, let's keep going. All right, our target list for Tier 4. So the one Tier 4 you should buy, if you're going to buy any Tier 4, uh, Series 4, excuse me. You're going to buy any Series 4 is Zabu. Zabu is the most important Series 4 in the game, one of the most important cards in the game. Zabu alone opens up multiple decks across the whole game for you. Get Zabu if you can at all in any way, shape, form, or otherwise. Get Zabu, you should get Zabu. I don't know if I can make that clear. Needed pieces for multiple decks. Ravona, Darkhawk, Null, and to a lesser extent, Hitmonkey. Um, we'll talk about Hitmonkey in a second. So Ravona opens up some cool Darkhawk stuff. It opens up some cool Goblin stuff. And it opens up some really good Cerebro stuff and Patriot stuff. That's a lot of decks that Ravona opens up for you. It's very powerful. Tarkok has a package. It remains the most powerful package in the game. You should get it. And Null is one of two high series cards needed for a... Um, Null is one of two... Excuse me. Null is one of two high series cards who is completely needed for a destroy list, and destroy is just a consistently powerful list. So those three cards are needed. Hitmonkey is not yet needed. Um, he's becoming closer to needed. He's in a lot of the best versions of Grandmaster, and it's assumed that Black Swan is going to put Hitmonkey back into the meta. 
So I'm not sure where to rank Hit Monkey based on that, but I I'm guessing he's needed. He probably otherwise fits in other fine good cards. The generally good cards that aren't like needed for any specific deck, they're just good cards that you're happy to have, are Legion, who's just one of the best fives in the game. Mobius, who's just I'm if you're sick of losing to Sarah and She-Hulk and Death, Mobius is great. Echo, same thing as Mobius, except replace with Ms. Marvel and Iron Man. And Spider Ham, which is just like a really nice utility cheap card. Replaces with Iceman just fine. All right, the next section is cards that you need if you want to play a specific deck. If you want to play a discard, you need Modok. There's like no exception if you want to play like the classic discard apocalypse list. And I have a really good version of that we're going to talk about tomorrow. You need Modok. If you want to play Phoenix Force decks, I mean, no shit, you need Phoenix Force. Move decks all have Ghost Spider, so do Phoenix Force decks, but move decks all have Ghost Spider. And then Snow Guard is in every Loki deck. So if you want to play one of those specific decks, um, the first two are like 100% necessities. The next two are replaceable, but your deck gets much worse without them. You need those cards. Other fine or good cards. Nimrod is a good card. It goes in some Phoenix Force decks, some Destroy decks. It's not great, but it's good. Dokken is a good card. It goes in some discard decks, some shenanigan combo decks. Havoc is fine. I wasn't sure if Havoc should go in fine or bad. Bad cards aren't bad. They just don't have like a home in the meta. So Havoc probably... I don't know, Havoc goes in one of the two places. Uh, out of respect to Queen Equinox, for whom uh, Havoc is her second favorite card, then it's in fine good. Kitty Pride um, is bad right now, but like, there's no chance Kitty stays bad. And if they release Hope Summers in anything like the um, condition she is, then Kitty becomes the most important card in the game, so that's important. Mirage is good in Loki decks, but Sentinel replaces her just fine, so you're happy to have her, but you don't care. Uh, and Silver Samurai is just a really cool card in a lot of shells. You just saw a shell, but it's not like a requirement for basically anything. And the bad cards are Howard. Howard is fun, and my friend Robitussin is going to be mad at me for having him here, but he's not a requirement. Lady Deathstrike is, like, not in anything. Man-Thing maybe should be played more, but isn't. And Martyr has homes, but, like, they're not good yet. I think that's not so much on Martyr, much more that, like, the second Blob went away, Killmonger came back, and now, like, Martyr is just a sad card. So, oh, okay, this is my series for tier list. Let me know what you agree with, disagree with in the comments, please. All right, this is the Grand Monkey. This is my guy Tucker's deck. This is such a cool deck. I played this. I really enjoyed it, although I am a fool for Hit Monkey decks. I love Hit Monkey decks. Um, you can tell I made this deck because it's got a bajillion hips in it. So you've got two different play patterns. You've got the Sarah monkey pattern, and you've got the Thor Jane monkey pattern, right? So if you're going to go Sarah monkey, you're looking for um, a Mysterio into hit monkey play with like a Mjolnir at the end, and then you just put a crap ton of power on the board. Um, and Wasp would be in that case too, ideally. And then you can um, otherwise, your other play is you go Jane on five, and then you've got Mjolnir, Wasp, Thor, and that's still three zeros, right? Um, sorry, Mjolnir, Wasp, that's two zeros. With Hip Monkey, now you've got um, three extra energy to spend, and you can drop like a Nico or a Grandmaster or whatever and win. And you can Grandmaster either Mjolnir or Hip Monkey for, you know, profit. All right. So you need the Monkey, but you can try Werewolf, and if you did that, I would change the Mysterio, Bass, and Wasp for Iceman, Luke, and Yellow Jacket. Um, Nico can be any gun, Iceman. I'd like to try to jam in Luke, so I might try Luke there. I'd really like a one, though, so como si, como sa. Uh, 61% win rate in what I want to say is about 35 games, and Tucker is the Pirate King. Turn one and two, the only real play is Bast. You can drop Quake on two, but I tend not to. Turn three is Thor or Bishop, um, based on whether you have Sarah or Jane in hand. If you have both, though, you're probably playing both. Um, I like to play Thor first, even if I um, I know that's one less power on Bishop. But, and this is like a huge thing, um, I'd rather play Sarah than Jane. And if I can play Thor first, I have an extra shot at drawing Mjolnir. And if I draw Mjolnir, I don't have to play Jane. And then I can do more shenanigans for the deck. Um, turn four, Thor and Bishop plus Bast. You can also plus Nico whenever a spell is good. Oh, um, Every Nico spell is good, except the move right, which has beat me plenty of times. So, turn five, Sarah or Jane. And turn six, drop wide, include hammers and hip monkey. 
uh, Grandmaster on either Mjolnir or Hitmonkey is just so much power. I mean, a 16 power Thor is great, and you often break way more than 16 power with Hitmonkey when you're able to drop a Grandmaster. Cool. Let's keep going. We've got Wasp, Basp, Basp, Bast, Mysterio, Bishop, Hitmonkey, Sarah. So we've got uh, uh, six hips. Love to see it. I don't have a Grandmaster variant because, God forbid, they released more than one variant for cards this month. Uh, Midnight Suns for Nico, my favorite Quake. You're going to see it in every Quake deck, even though I have another decent one. This is my favorite Jane until the hip comes out. This is my favorite Thor, and unless there's a hip frog, it's going to be my favorite Thor. And that's all the variants. Oh, the best Shadow King in the game for the time being. Cool. All right, so target list for Series 5. So the best cards are, in my opinion, Loki, Annihilus, Evolutionary, and Thanos. Um, Loki has been off and on the best card in the best deck. I'm not sure Loki's not in the best deck right now. It's There's an argument that Lambie Loki or uh, the Nate Biz Loki are some of the best decks. Annihilus has, is a package that's extremely powerful and is only going to get better as we go forward. You should have Annihilus. High Evolutionary is a deck unto himself. You get High Evolutionary in like two Series 3 cards, and you have a deck that can compete at the top of the Marvel Snap meta, which seems like it's a thing that you may want to do. And then Thanos is the same basic concept. You need a little bit more to make Thanos work, but like Thanos is occasionally the best deck in the game, and Evolutionary is occasionally the third best deck in the game. Needed pieces. Having Eliath is great. Having Iron Lad is great. Um, having Jeff is great. Having Ms. Marvel is great. They all just go in decks, right? Ms. Marvel and Eliath, like, are a little more, like, required for the decks they go in because they're, like, Ms. Marvel's a priority machine. A lot of the wins games if you have priority. It's the best general six outside of Doom. So, fine. Um, what did I, okay, good. Um, fine, right? I guess Blob should probably be in this place. Hey, pretend Blob is in this list because Blob and Eliath are fun functionally interchangeable at this point. Our generally good list is pretty damn big. Uh, I guess it's not pandemic. It's Nico, Nebula, Gladiator, Carrier, and Silk. Uh, people are going to argue whether Silk should be here. Silk is still one of the best two drops in the game. She just doesn't get played enough. Nico is in like six decks that she's great in. Same thing for Nebula. Gladiator is the best stats you can get in the game at three. And Kyra just makes a lot of your evolutionary and Thanos things actually work. Specific deck stuff, Black Knight is his own deck. Um, Black Knight is probably the best is his own deck card around. Again, Blob, pretend he's in needed pieces. Galactus is in his own deck. That deck is decent. Shaw is not his own deck, but you can't play Surfer really without Shaw. Tribunal is in several Phoenix Force decks, but also has the um, the big ongoing Hella Lover Tribunal deck that exists only with Tribunal. X-23 for Destroy, and Werewolf for the bounce shenanigans that are about to take over the meta with Black Swan. It's the same concept as Hitmonkey, but like Werewolf also has some like Annihilus decks and stuff. So I think those are the specific deck cards. Um, get them based on what you want to play and what you have other cards for. So other fine good cards are Elsa, Hercules, and Selene. People don't like Elsa right now, but she's still a good card. Selene is a perfectly fine card if you like running goblins. And Hercules is a perfectly fine card if you like running move, but not a requirement. And then Jean and Kang are your bad cards here. Don't, don't go out of your way for Jean. Cool. Again, let me know where you agree and disagree with this list as we go. All right. This is Cam Worst. He named this deck Magnus Carlson. It is 70% win rate, 30 and 13, with a 1.3 cube rate, which is a cube rate that is utterly through the roof. This deck has a ridiculous amount of play. The play that you should be seeing, those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, is that you can go either Wave or Sarah into Eliath and Grandmaster. And then you win. It's lovely. Just... There's nothing opponents can do to stop that most of the time if you've got priority going to the last turn. So a lot of the deck is built around that priority. All right, so Nebula, Echo, and Jeff could be Nightcrawler, Medusa, Mobius in some combination, depending on what you need. Um, Mobius is great because it stops your opponent from bullshitting you and getting priority by playing a bunch of cheap things. Um, Nightcrawler is Nightcrawler, Medusa is just a great priority machine. Excuse me, Nightcrawler is a fine like backup Jeff for this deck. Um, Lad really hurts not to have, but Crossbones or Enchantress. Crossbones is a really nice follow-up to Mr. Fantastic, and Enchantress is a good way to say, oh god, my opponent had Ms. Marvel and I didn't, so let's make sure that I can get priority back. 
Um, yeah, you need Ms. Marvel, Eliath, and, and Grandmaster for this deck. This is like the most like Grandmaster is needed deck. This is the thumbnail video. Uh, this deck is wild. Okay, so again, this is 70% win rate, uh, 30 and 13, 1.3 cubes, and is the rank 141 player. So like just, you know, kind of through the roof stuff. Thank you, KM Worst. All right, turn one, Nebula. Nebula is generally used as a distraction, so you can get Pryo elsewhere. Do not play on Nebula. If your opponent's ignoring Nebula, she's going to get big and get you Pryo. If your opponent's playing on Nebula, great, play elsewhere, and you will get Pryo. Pryo wins with this deck. Then Echo mid. Turn two, Jeff over Lizard over one drop mid. And again, uh, Cam Worst gave us this play, these play lines. So like Chef's Kiss, we know they work at the top of Infinite Ladder. Turn three, wave if you have Doom, and if you're not playing like the biggest, dumbest deck in the world, um, them being able to drop something too big here can cost you Pryo. Like, be wary of an evolved Hulk, I guess, right? Because you're not going to be able to get that off the board. You better win the other two lanes then. So wave if Doom and you're not playing something big and dumb, if not Mr. Fantastic. That is better than wave if you have Sarah, because getting Sarah out early is kind of silly. And then a one or two drop is the other option. Turn four. Doom, if you waved, or Ms. Marvel, or Iron Lad. Simple enough. Uh, Lad, ideally, is hitting Doom or Ms. Marvel because you didn't play them, right? Turn five, Sarah is generally better than Wave, plus Jeff or Lizard, though it depends if you need priority. If your priority is basically locked up, Sarah is better. If your priority is in question, Wave and Jeff slash Lizard are better. And that's generally better than Lad. Lad is trying to hit Sarah or Wave. Last turn, your ideal play is Eliath in the left or right, and then Grandmaster to push it to center. It eats everything. Have a nice day. Your opponent didn't reveal cards. You win. Doom and Grandmaster is a crap ton of power all over the board, so that seems like it's pretty good too. It is, um, Doom is usually 15, and then you're adding 10 more, so it's 25 power on the last turn. I don't know. That seems dece. And then Ms. Marvel plus Lad is also perfectly freaking fine. Okay. So Lizard um, is generally played opposite Nebula, or um, it can make an opponent, well, or end, I guess. It can make an opponent fill a lane before turn six, letting you know where to play Eliath and Grandmaster. Mr. Fantastic plus Ms. Marvel is the Pryo machine. Like, if you can get both of those going, you've got plus seven in every lane on turn, like, five, you're going to have priority. Um, Iron Lad is either turn four or a one-third chance at Doom or Eliath on turn six. That seems good to me. Eliath times two is sick, completely broken. Not something that should exist in Marvel Snap. And for Doom, please remember that if you're going to Grandmaster Doom, it's going to turn off Ms. Marvel in every lane but the initial Doom lane. So you'll get that plus five like you still had an original Doom there, but Ms. Marvel is not putting anything in the other lanes. So, I mean, you're losing one plus five from Ms. Marvel and getting that extra plus five from Doom, basically. Because Ms., uh, that middle lane, whatever, right? It's going to have the two sixes, but Ms. Marvel wasn't probably triggering there anyway. Cool. Good to know. Play this deck. You're just going to win a lot. This is going to be meta. All right. Some quick variant talk. We've got our hip Nebula, our hip Jeff, our hip Eliath, our hip Sarah, our hip Lad, our hip Ms. Marvel, and our hip Wave. It's a seven hipper. Not bad. This is the lizard from that weird Newverse thing they did recently. We've got our Peach Momoko Echo. It's my favorite Echo, and I'm, I told you I'd get it fixed so I could show it off to you. We've got Creepy uh, Mr. Fantastic, but he's a pirate. So, you know, this should be Tucker's deck because it's running the pirate Mr. Fantastic, but what are you going to do? And then finally, we have the Doom. That is glorious. I have this Doom with a gold background, and it's, I don't want to say my favorite variant, but it might very well be my favorite variant in Marvel Snap right now. Play this deck, please. All right. Real quick, if you made it this far in the video and you're willing to and you find value in this, again, we do this every day. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash snapjudgments. For $1, which is like, we do uh, $1 a month. We do like 30 videos a month. You're paying like less than a cent a video. It is the show love tier. $5 is the peace tier, which means you get these videos right after I record them in the evening. You get content suggestions, complete po po uh, post archive podcast guest questions we've got lauren whatevs and schnirp coming on and if you'd like to ask them questions please feel free deck doctor which no one's taking me up on yet but hey it's there and priority answers
For 10 bucks, you get a once a month exclusive podcast, which is me and Roy going on forever about something. We reviewed every card released in 20, uh, in 2023. That was our first one. The second one will be going up soon. You get exclusive content written in video, as in I release an extra like two minute video every night just to sort of talk about how things are going. You get an exclusive monthly giveaway. So one person gets it for free as they get a season pass. I've also got some Marvel Snap Zone premiums to give away. We've got mailbag question and answers there. End of the day, end of daily video shout outs, priority cut, priority questions for podcast guests and all previous tiers. So if you're interested, please check out the Patreon. I think it's a really cool value. Um, if anyone is subscribed, let people know how you like in the comments. Even if it's negative, just be honest. If you think it's worth it, if you think it's not. Cool. All right. Finally, we have the counter guy surfer. I don't have stats on this. I'm really sorry. The counter guy is the best surfer player I know. He is a surfer main. I guess he's, I don't know if he's the best surfer player I know. I'd have to actually think about that claim more. But he is a surfer main who plays a crap ton of silver surfer. So I played this list. Um, I played it to a gold ticket, and then I didn't have time to play the gold ticket, and I won a bunch of games on ladder with it, climbed some ranks. This deck is great. It's really straightforward and powerful. This is the other home for Grandmaster. Um, there's one other home for Grandmaster we'll talk about in weekend missions. But this is where you want to be for these cards. So we've got... Um, okay. So we basically want to win a lane with Storm and then win a lane with either Brood or Sebastian Shaw getting stupidly huge because you're double surfering them. Uh, Brood is 6 plus 12, right? So that's um, 18 power in a Brood surfer lane. If you can get that going with... I don't know anything else of reasonable size even if it's the surfer that's just two more there that's a 20 power lane seems like it's nice um your shaw becomes a five seven then nine eleven from just that play if you got a okoye an iron heart or a nova on it it goes through the roof very easily and these are lane winners that your opponent can't deal with i am not a thousand percent sure i don't want nico who is both great and sometimes gets in the way to be goose so i can just steal some of these lanes sometimes without having to worry about going too too tall all right so i'm kind of fine without grandmaster with abs man in this deck grandmaster is great to go over the top but not a requirement uh nico just changes to forge or i'm telling you i got a feeling about goose if you want to try it i have not yet um this needs shaw Nik uh nikia shadow king and dazzler are all really really good cards in this list Dazzler, um, you're not always filling every lane, but even if Dazzler is a 2-6, um, you're perfectly happy. While um, Shadow King is just like once in a while, like you're playing Destroy, you're just like, ugh, I could just say screw you to that giant Venom sitting there. I'd feel so much better. What are you going to do? All right, so TCG is a surfer main, and his builds literally always work. I'm always happy when he posts a surfer build. I play it, I win cubes. Nice and simple. So turn one, Nova, and you, Nico, if it's draw two, Demon, um, or your next play is going to be Nova or Okoye. You're perfectly fine to trade the Nova for a Demon or Okoye for a Demon. Or blow either of them up to draw two. And, like, I know that you're losing some Nova value for drawing two, but drawing two is so powerful. Turn two, Nico, if plus two, with Brood or Shaw, if not Okoye. Turn three, Storm over Shaw over Brood. Uh, and you play... Shaw generally in a left or right lane because you can safely drop um you can safely drop whatchamacallit on Shaw. Uh Grandmaster on Shaw without worrying about sending him. I lost a game because Nico was in a, uh, one game because it happened. I just had to get used to it. Where sorry, it wasn't Nico, it was a Koye who was in the left lane with my surfer, and I was like, crap, this is gonna be frustrating. And guess what? It was. It it threw where Surfer would have won me four cubes, Okoye lost me four cubes. It was a conquest, and I still won, but still. Uh, turn four, Jugs after Storm. Or you can still drop Storm here, especially if you haven't seen Sarah yet. Or you can drop Shaw here, Brood here, or Killmonger here. Cool. Killmonger equals Lad. That definitely doesn't mean Lad. Killmonger equals uh, Ironheart. Sorry, I got Iron in my head and said the wrong one. Assuming you have enough cards, Ironheart's fine here. Turn five, Sarah, and if not, you can drop a three and a two just fine, or a three and a one just fine. And then turn six, Surfer plus three plus three, or Surf, one of those threes could be Grandmaster. Fairly common play pattern at this point. 
is Killmonger in the left lane to fill a brood lane usually. And then the other lane that has, um, what's his dumb name, Shaw in it, you go Surfer and Grandmaster. And like, if you have um, Nico, you can drop Nico last just fine here. But like, whatever. Yeah, or you can drop Nova first. You get the idea. And then you win, because that's stupid strong. This is a really cool deck. If you miss Original Surfer, this is very, very good and reasonably close to that. I'm telling you, I'm going to end up cutting Nico. Just I keep thinking about it as I'm talking about this. As I finish, and I love Nico, I'm cutting Nico. Let's talk variants. We've got our Pantheon Nova, which looks like Annihilation Nova, so I love it and I bought it. Obviously, this uh, hip Nico is not out, but like I was clicking through the Nikos and saw it and was like, ooh. Because I didn't, I also chose not to run my um, hip surfer because I like this one so much better. I have it black and white and it's gorgeous. Um, we've got our season pass version of Okoye, our comic book cover, Iron Heart, my favorite Iron Heart, hip brood, hip Sarah, hip Killmonger, baby juggernaut, um, the storm they gave us for the music video thing. And then I don't know why, but I decided that this deck felt better with the Shaw that has the like regal cape from the Hellfire Gala, which is a season pass one. So that's where we are. I like this deck. You should try it. I don't think it's as like OP as the previous deck, but it's really cool. Okay. Ready? I'm not spending money on a pixel. Give me pixel hip. Is pixel hip a thing? Is that in the game? I've never seen it. Sorry. Is pixel hip? Is hip Sandman in the game? I've never seen it, but I'm told it exists. Um, I'm not buying Dracula. I decided to show off my three Draculas, all three of which I love. So we've got like classic Dracula. We've got hip Dracula. And then we've got like horror movie Dracula. So I'm all set for my Draculas. Um, I like Art Germ. Invisible Woman, but I have Alex Ross, and they feel very similar to me, and I like Alex Ross better. I have, don't spend money on pixels. I have Hip for Black Knight. I also have the Phoenix Force one, so we're all good there. I have a Venomized Ghost Spider. I'm not sure why there's two Venomized Ghost Spiders, but I have one. I also have the um, Peach Momoko, so I'm good there. I have several Emmas, including, um, not Hellfire Gallop, including the Peach, but like we're fine. I have Hip for Destroyer. We're fine. And then my premium mystery variant, because remember, it is Twitch Drops right now. Check some people out on Twitch Drops. Get a free premium mystery variant. I got the Ghost Rider that I didn't really want because I already have plenty of Ghost Riders. I literally got a Ghost Rider like two days ago, which meant I had five Ghost Riders. And now I guess I have six. Hooray. All right, we're on the tier of Patreon support that comes with on-air things. We've got Models, who just hit infinite. Congrats, Models. Pretty chill. Homie from the Discord. Fathor Newman, wonderful YouTube creator. Check him out. Inc. Great person. No Flex, another homie from the Discord. Mandatory Burnout, Discord bud. Matt Conduit, Good Dog Gamer, who's had decks featured on this channel. Keredix Lee, Mikey Hijinks, GG Winfield. Great Creator, Cables. Rob Silverman, Abigail, uh, sorry, Matt H., Abigail Geeslin, Direwolf, Ocularis, Jay Navarri, Spike Jones, Koire, my former student. Louis Anson is, who's like over 30, because I'm a very old person at this point. JD McDonaldino, the homie who builds incredible decks, top 100 player. And of course, the great homie, Min. You need to check him out, Rito in Disguise on Twitch. All right, so that Hella deck's one of the best decks in the game. Um, I need to test that Tuck deck more, but like if Tuck's playing it well, Tuck's decks are badass. Um, Counter Guy's Surfer is badass. But the deck I'm really excited about is the uh, KM Worst deck. I think that deck is scary good and it might be a problem. Hit that sub button if you're interested in the Patreon. Check it out. We got so much more for you tomorrow. But it's midnight now and I got work in the morning. Peace.